So we have one of these early uh, remote control motors. It actually is the exact same size motor as the 9 volt. Now I've just changed it out. And that looks like it's as good as new now. So we'll test it out and see how it runs. We're continuing the experiment, changing the motors out. This is another 9 volt motor. I'm working on replacing it, and you can see this one's actually really on its way out. in there so uh yep we're gonna replace that one with one that came out of this housing which is a power functions and it's the same exact size motor as you can tell so we're gonna wire it up to the test rig make sure that one looks good all right just took the motor out of the power functions motor not soldered any connections on yet but as you can tell, it's got a lot more life in it than the other one did. I also opened up that one, which was the other old 9 volt motor before I changed it out. And that one is skunked up inside, its contacts are kind of burnt up. So, yep, some of these motors need to be replaced after a, a lifetime. So, get this one soldered on the new contacts and we'll try it out. So we're back with the replacement motor. All we did was re-solder on those two metal plates and make contact down there. And I wouldn't, you don't have to worry about this resistor because in the 9 volt it's still there, just it's a loose part. There's a little disc, it's hard to see, but there's a little disc actually between there and that connector. But you give it some power. See what new. Cover, you're all good to go. So there is one more small caveat. The ones I've replaced with the power functions I got put an R on them because the motors apparently had a reverse polarity. So that's one of the R ones. This one is a non-modified one. I want to give them power. They go away from each other. I said usually all you do is swap the wires, but since I knew I was probably gonna end up doing more than one, I have two of them. Then they both just go reverse at the same time. So, no big deal. Just another thing I should mention. It's an easy thing to solve instead of soldering back on the metal joints off of the original 9 volt motor. You would just do wires off the motor and reverse them to the contact points. So, but yeah, good as new. We're gonna hook up the train back up and uh, go from there. Both installed. Let's give them a test run. That's it, works pretty good. Good as new, I'm only on speed four, just put down to three there. Both motors seem to be working well in tandem. Good as new. I have two motors to still change out. I think one is this yellow one, and then one is one of the Maersk motors is not exactly happy. So, there we go. So I'm back again. <clears throat> uh, I did have one more issue. One of the motors was still cutting out early. Um, so it had to have been the thermal transistor. So there's a little disc that I was pointing at in the last video um, that was cutting out early. I'm assuming it was probably on its way out that component. Luckily, I had a replacement. And uh, I've been running this now for quite a few minutes and it hasn't cut out or anything. And it's only at half speed, everything's run as it should so i believe it's all good now but i'm uh making another video back in the room to show you what i replaced all right so, so what i did you can see the the coating that's the exact same or very similar thermal i guess the thermal overload is what it is and like i said it goes down here on the nine volt motor and it's just bare so if you uh get these motors uh, uh wires off and peel this coating off which is not it's a little hard to do but not terrible um, and that's a new thermal overload as far as I can tell and uh, that's the only thing I had to replace I might just look in to see if I can find these without the coating because I'm sure I'm going to have this issue more and more with some of these motors but that's another component that seems to fail between the motors going 
back in gummed up and then thermal overload. So thanks for watching.